All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Power Up on this Monday. It is Monday, May the 6th, and hope that you had a wonderful weekend. Looking forward to a great week. Hopefully, you're ready for the week. Uh, and, man, it has started off just beautifully out outside today here in northern Michigan. Sun shining. I hope the picture is okay. I uh, got the sun shining through the windows here, so uh, it's a little bright in here. And so hopefully you can see me okay. Not that you need to see me, but uh, at least it adds uh, to to the, the viewing, I guess, a little bit to be able to see me. But anyway, I uh, hope that you're doing well. Hope that you had a great weekend. We've had a wonderful start to our our faith, family, and culture conference. Uh, and it's been encouraging uh, and uplifting, challenging at the same time. Uh, and convicting. And so uh, if you were not able to get out yesterday for our conference, I would encourage you to uh, come on out for uh, the conference tonight. That'll be at 6 o'clock. We also have Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock as well. would encourage you uh, to be out for each one of those. They'll also be live streamed. So each uh, each service uh, is going to be live streamed here, uh, and then it'll be uploaded onto our other platforms as well and so be a part of it uh, however that you can and it'll be a blessing and encouragement to you it already has been to myself we're going to be in daniel chapter number seven today hit that share button real quick good to have a good number of you on sorry we're a few minutes late uh mondays are always a bit of a challenge we got to kind of set things up and all that and so uh, just a couple of minutes late here today, so for that I apologize. But we're here, uh, and we're ready. To, we're ready to go. Hopefully, you are as well. Daniel chapter number seven. So we get into Daniel chapter seven. Okay, there's a couple of things I want you to note as we get started, uh, and I'll kind of give you a game plan for, well, a rough game plan for what we're gonna, excuse me, try to try to do here. Okay, and so. Uh, as we know, as we get into chapter number seven, we know this is not uh, in chronological order here, okay, in, in regards to the book of Daniel. We see in the, in the first verse uh, where it is, when it is that this happens uh, in Daniel chapter seven. And we know what's going to happen here. Daniel's going to have, uh, has a dream and visions uh, of his head uh, upon his bed. And so he's, he's asleep. He's having the, these dreams, he's having these visions, uh, and so we know that that's where he's at. It's in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. You might remember, we're into, introduced uh, to Belshazzar uh, way back in chapter number 5. Uh, he would be the king that uh, is after Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter number 5, you might remember that Belshazzar is ruling. He's having a, a big old party. And uh, he's desecrating the the uh, uh, vessels of God, uh, drinking out of the vessels that were taken out of the temple, uh, and we know that the handwriting on the wall and so on. Okay, so that's Belshazzar. So this is not in chronological order, uh, but uh, I think this will be this will be a very interesting, I'm sure, to uh, to many here. This has to deal with uh, in Daniel's time had to deal with the. Uh, future events and uh, we'll even see uh, some of these future events for potentially us as well uh, and we'll see we'll see about that so let's look verse number one we're not going to get the whole chapter done not we're probably not going to get into the interpretation of the dream so much today i just want to kind of go through the dream uh, or, or the vision and, and see what that is and we'll make a few comments but uh, over the next over tomorrow and maybe We'll see how it goes tomorrow. The next day, uh, we may have we may get into it a little bit more uh, specifically, okay? Uh, and uh, the interpretation thereof, okay? Verse number one. The Bible says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, "Here it is." He says, "I I saw." In my vision, by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. The four great beasts came upon, came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So, the, and these four beasts, we'll kind of, we'll give you a brief uh, description of them. Dano gives this description here. We'll talk about just, just briefly today, maybe a little bit more tomorrow. But they represent four different uh, kingdoms. Uh, and we'll let you know each one here, uh, what each kingdom would depict. Okay, First, verse uh, number four. 
Verse number four, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Okay, and this first beast uh, representing uh, Babylon uh, and we know Babylon being uh, even even uh, as we've been introduced to him, King Nebuchadnezzar being the leader there, uh, being probably the most prominent ruler of Babylon. We know Belt Belshazzar after that, uh, but that's where the kingdom was. Excuse me, where the kingdom was lost. Okay, and so Babylon representing here uh, is represented by by the lion. We know the lion here uh, as we consider it. Uh, and, and we kind of want to get into this maybe more so tomorrow, uh, but man, it has to deal with, with, with strength, you know, the, the king, the ruler, the uh, power. Uh, and then it's got eagle's wings as well. Uh, and eagle's wings, uh, majestic, uh, and, and, and all of that. And so uh, we see a lot of these maybe different pictures in there as well. Uh, but we're not. That's not really the direction we want to go with it. What does the picture and all that was represent? There's a lot of speculation in that, and so I don't want to get into that part of it. But uh, we know that Babylon is represented here by the lion. Verse number five. Let's look at the next beast. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side. It had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it arise, uh, devour much flesh. And so. Uh, the bear would be symbolic and representative of the Medo-Persian Empire. Uh, and that Medo-Persian Empire we've been introduced to here in the book of Daniel. Uh, king Darius being uh, this first king here. Uh, and uh, the three ribs uh, that, that they uh, have in its mouth would, uh, would seem to, to indicate the uh, three um, countries that they historically conquered uh, the three countries that they historically conquered obviously Babylon we know that God foretold that to uh, King Belshazzar uh, but Babylon uh, and then into into Africa we've got Lydia uh, and Egypt were conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire and so that would be the three ribs uh, that were in its mouth and so uh, and then we see that command to arise devour much flesh and so let's look so we got the two first two beasts babylon historically okay we can see the precedent here babylon followed by the medo persian empire uh, and then let's look at verse number six after this i beheld and lo another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl the beast excuse me had also four heads and dominion was given to it okay and so uh, we've got this next this next kingdom that is set up we've got babylonian kingdom the medo persian kingdom uh, and now here this leopard represents the uh, the grecian kingdom uh led specifically by and this is probably a very familiar name for many of you alexander the great now alexander the great conquered the known world during his lifetime and during his rule there uh, in the Grecian Empire. Uh, and it says here there's a reference to four wings of a fowl. Uh, the, uh, Alexander the Great had, uh, after he had conquered the known world, uh, we note that uh, after his, his death, there were four, four generals that uh, uh, took up his kingdom. Uh, and his kingdom was divided into, up into those, by those four generals there. Uh, that Grecian kingdom there. So the leopard being representative of the Grecian kingdom, King or Alexander the Great swiftly conquering everything, just kind of blazing his way throughout the world conquering. And he spent his whole life conquering. And, and you might remember the story, once he had, uh, had conquered everything, uh, he kind of, what is there left to do? Uh, he'd already, he'd done everything uh, and he died and uh, his four generals took over. Okay, now let's look at, so that's the first three. Now let's look at verse number seven. And this I saw in the night, visions. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful uh, and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. 
It devoured a break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, okay? Now, this fourth beast uh, would be representing the Roman kingdom uh, and following this Grecian kingdom, and, and that might uh, uh, get you to think really quick here. Uh, Grecian kingdom, they would have spoke what language? the Greek language, uh, and much of the Bible, the New Testament uh, specifically, uh, was first penned in Greek, uh, and God gave it in Greek. Greek was the uh, language at the time, uh, and uh, we have that translation into the, the Greek language. Obviously, we have Hebrew, Aramaic, Aramaic being part of the uh giving of the word of God as well. And so Greek, and, and now we've got conquering that, that Grecian empire. We now have the Roman empire. The Roman empire, we know significant uh, as that's the uh, Roman empire was, was the in charge when Jesus walked the earth. Uh, and so let's, let's look once again at this description here. After this, I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, and terrible, strong, exceedingly, great iron teeth, uh, and it, it devoured uh, a break in pieces, stamped the residue of the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were, that were before it, and it had ten horns. And those ten horns, uh, we'll probably look at those a little bit more specifically uh, tomorrow, but we know that, uh, that the Roman kingdom uh, was very, uh, what we might say, advanced uh, in their technologies, in their fightings, and so on. And so uh, these, uh, this... Uh, uh, Roman uh, uh, kingdom here, old Roman Empire, ruled for a very long time as well. Uh, and these these ten uh, horns that are mentioned here are the ten leaders, rulers of the Roman uh, Empire. Uh, and we'll take a look. Maybe uh, maybe we'll mention them tomorrow, uh, and we'll get those to you so that you kind of see historically what the Roman Empire is. So we've got four beasts, four beasts, four kingdoms. Uh, uh, throughout history here, beginning with Babylon, the Medo-Persian uh, Empire that is then represented, the Grecian Empire is then represented, and then we get into the Roman Empire uh, and the longevity of that empire with the ten kings represented. Uh, and in, my, in many cases, it was much persecution, much, much persecution uh, upon the church through that Roman Empire. Okay, and so we'll uh, continue this tomorrow, looking at these uh, these ten horns. Maybe give you further description of things as well. Uh, but I hope this is kind of intriguing to you as we get into some of these maybe future events for us, and we look at the interpretation of uh, that God gives to Daniel in regards to these dreams and these visions. Okay, uh, so with that, we will end for the day. Uh, and we'll give you more insight into the scriptures even tomorrow, all right? Uh, let's welcome those who have come into live. Hit that share button if you have not already done so. Uh, and uh, as I've, hopefully you're able to hear that okay. I As I just now been kind of reviewing them, man, I, I talked really softly uh, throughout that. So for that, I apologize. Hopefully volume was okay for you. Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Ingrid, good morning to you. Love you and have a great day. David, good morning to you uh, and your wife. Uh, have a good day as well. I hope your hope your wife's doing well. I, I'm not sure about her surgery if she'd had that yet, but I've been praying for her uh, and uh, praying uh, that the surgery would go well and that recovery would go well uh, too. Uh, Brian and Cindy, good morning to you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Uh, Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you both. And Charlie and Marcia, good morning to you both as well. Uh, have a good day. And Jody, greetings to you. Thank you so much for being on. Hit that share button if you haven't already done so. Lord willing, we'll touch base again tomorrow as we continue to look at Daniel chapter number 7 and his visions and dreams. Have a good day, everybody. Lord willing, we'll see many of you tonight for our faith, uh, family, and culture conference. Have a good, have a good rest of the day.